Hi everyone. In this video, we'll review net present value, also known as NPV, using Python. Before we get started, let's review the packages we will use. These include matplotlib and numpy. Let's get into what net present value is. And the net present value is usually spoken of in the context of corporate finance, where we're trying to value some project. And NPV is the sum of the present values of each of the cash flows, positive as well as negative, that occur over the life of the project. If the NPV of a project is positive, a manager should accept the project. If it is negative, the project should be rejected. The hurdle rate, or the required rate of return, is factored into the NPV, meaning that if the NPV is positive, it exceeds the hurdle rate. NPVs of a firm's project are additive. An analyst can sum together all the NPVs to estimate the total value of a firm. For example, if a grocery chain is reviewing investments in only two locations, then the value of the grocery chain is the sum of the NPVs of the two grocery store locations. And here we have the notation for NPV, where T is the initial investment period, N is all of the investment periods up to point n c c f is the cash flow at time sub t and one plus r r is the discount rate at which we discount the cash flow raised to the period of time t and we subtract this all by the initial investment in the video we'll focus on examples provided by Professor Aswath Damodoran from NYU, and I'll speak to some of the works that he's published on this later in the video. But what we'll do first is we're going to create a dictionary, and I'm going to call this dictionary just project, and I am going to have two values. We're going to have a year for the project and all the cash flows of the project. For my first key, it's the year. And I'm going to use the range function. And what this range function does is it will give me an integer from zero up to, but not including five. So this is going to be a project over four years where the initial investment period is zero. And we can see that our first value for the cash flow is this negative $1 billion value. That's the initial investment for this project. And after that, we have the cash flows that come from the investment. We can see that they're all positive. So it's 300 million, 400 million, 500 million, and finally 600 million. The rate here is going to be the rate at which we discount all of these cash flows over the years. So let's run this. And what I'm going to do next is I am going to actually calculate this and we're going to graph the MPV. What I'll do is I'm going to use matplotlib. We're going to first create our figure and eventually our plot. And I'm going to set NPV equal to zero initially. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a for loop. I'm going to say for the year and the cash flow for our project. And this is where I'm going to put my if statement. So I'm going to say if the cash flow is less than or equal to zero, we're going to plot a bar chart. And what we have here is we're going to plot the year on the X axis. On the Y axis, we're going to calculate that each of the discounted cash flows for the NPV. So we'll start with the initial year. Since we're, it's at year zero, there's no discounting it because it's already at its present value, but we have to discount each of the preceding cash flows after the initial investment. And what I want to do is, this is saying that if the cash flow is negative, we're going to plot it as a red bar. And what I'll also do is I want to increment our NPV, right now it's zero, with our the value for our discounted cash flow. And then I'm going to write my else statement and the only difference will be the color of the bar is going to be blue if the cash flow is positive. At the bottom here, I'm going to do some formatting with matplotlib. 
And what I'm going to do here is on the Y axis, I want to format it where the values will have a dollar sign and they'll be separated by commas. And I want to set the title, X axis label, and I also want to print out the net present value on the graph itself. Let's run this. Great, we have our graph printed out and we can see at year zero, that's our initial investment. We have this $1 billion investment. Then in the preceding years, we have these positive cash flows. These are all discounted. If we sum all of these together, we have a NPV of $323 million. Most likely the project manager will accept this project if there aren't any other ones with the same time frame with a higher NPV. Moving on, we're going to talk about the internal rate of return or the break-even rate for a project. The internal rate of return, also known as the IRR, is used to estimate the profit profitability of potential investments and is a popular tool within corporate finance. IRR is a discount rate that sets the net present value of all cash flows equal to zero in a discounted cash flow analysis. The IRR is a useful calculation when analysts are uncertain of the exact discount rate to use for their scenario analysis. A few examples of IRR calculations include companies evaluating stock buyback programs, a capital investment in a car factory, and an investor analyzing a potential real estate investment. The way that we're going to solve for the IRR is we're going to solve it iter iteratively. In this case, we're going to search for the root where the NPV is equal to zero. So this means that we want to find the discount rate where the NPV is going to be zero. We're going to give an initial estimate of the root and our algorithm is going to continuously increment by a certain specified number until we can find the estimated IRR. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function within Python. So we're starting off with def and I am going to call the function IRR. It's going to have three parameters, cash flow list, and this is going to be the list of cash flows from a project that we estimate, the root, and I'm going to set the root as a default value of 0 0.05. And finally, I'm going to increment our algorithm by 0 0.001 to try to make it as accurate as possible. I'm going to put a semicolon there and we're going to finish off the function by moving down. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a variable called periods. This is going to be a list. And this list is going to contain all of the periods except for the initial one zero. And I'll explain that as I code this out. So given the length of the cash flow list, if the length is five, then we'll have five periods. The first period is going to be the initial period zero, and it goes all the way out to four years with using the range function. And we're also going to slice this where we're going to take out the initial period zero in order to run our calculation within our algorithm. Next, I am going to calculate the NPV. And in this case, we want to get the NPV down to zero. The way that we do this is we have the initial cash flow zero. We are not going to multiply that by the root. It's just going to be that negative number. Then what we need to do is we're going to use list comprehension again, where we take the cash flow, multiply it by the root squared by the period and we have our cash flow list that we'll do that there for. Next, we have to put together our algorithm. So we'll start it with a while loop while NPV is greater than zero. What we're gonna do is we're going to take the root and we're going to add the increment to it. So that'll be the 0 0.001 by default. Then what we'll do is we're going to recalculate the NPV again. Then finally, we are going to get the IRR. The way that we find the IRR is we need to take one divided by the root, and then we need to subtract by one, and this will return our estimated IRR. Then I'm going to return the IRR, and I am going to save that as a variable. I'll call it project IRR. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap our function around the cash flows for our project. And next, what I'll do is I'm actually going to print this out on a graph. So let's run this. And we're, what we'll do is I'm going to illustrate this in a NPV profile, and that is going to graph the NPV across various different discount rates. So what I'm doing here is I have our list, I'm going to call it breakeven list, and I'm going to use NumPy's arrange function, and it's going to increment the discount rate from zero up to 35% and we're going to run the calculation and we'll plot this out. What I'm going to also do is I'm going to format this a bit and on the x-axis, I'm going to run a line at zero and on the y-axis, I'm going to plot out the project IRR as well. So let's do that. And we can see that we have our MPV profile. So we can see that when the discount rate is low, meaning that we're not discounting, if we look at zero, we're not discounting at all. It's just the sum of all of the cash flows together. But realistically, the discount rate is going to be some sort of value, usually between 0.05 and 0.25. So as we increase the discount rate, the NPV is going to fall because we require a higher rate of return. And we can see that we have the break even point or the IRR it's this red line here and it's at 24.84%. That's where the NPV is going to be equal to zero. And you can compare this against your cost of capital. There's a few different ways to do that. Highly recommend checking out Professor Damodoran's book that I referenced below if you want to get into this a bit more. But this lists out the IRR on the red line. so. If we set a discount rate of 24.84, then the NPV of our project is going to be zero. Finally, we can also have NPV with varying discount rates. So before we only had the one discount rate of 0.12 and we ran that NPV calculation or and we kept it constant. In reality, the discount rates are time bearing, meaning that they will change over time. We have a formula in order to be able to handle this as well. And just to go over the notation, so we start at time t, go up to time period n, and we sum all of these over where we take the cash flow and divide it by the product of the rates. And I'll describe that as we code through this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another dictionary. And in this scenario, we're going to say that we're a technology firm. And we're looking at an investment that goes out to four years. So we have the range five up to, but not including five. We have our cash flows listed here. And the difference is we can see that we have our discount rates within our dictionary as well. So they go from zero, that's going to be the initial year because we're not going to discount it at all. It's the, we already have the present value. That's the actual cost itself and it goes from 0.1 up to 0.13. And what we'll have to do next is we're going to have to calculate the discount rates for each year. So if we start at year zero, we're not going to have a discount rate, so that's just going to be one. Year one, we have this formula here where we have 0.1 plus one, and that's going to get give us a discount factor of 1.1. So we would divide our cash flow by 1.1. Going out to year two, we can see that it compounds. So we have 0.1 plus one multiplied by 0.11 plus one, and that is going to return us a discount factor of 1.221. And we can see that it increases over time, so we're going to more heavily discount the years further out. So what I'm going to do in order to do this in Python, I'm going to create a list called compound rate, And I'm going to run a for loop. I'm going to say for IDX. IDX usually sound, stands for index in range. And the range is going to be the length of our tech project. Okay. And semicolon, go down. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the compound rate. 
And for the compound rate, we're going to calculate the all of these years, and we're going to use NumPy's pr product function, or prod. And what it does is exactly what it does here. It does one plus the rate for rate in the tech project, and it's going to increment. And we can also print this out just so we can see how this works. And we can see that we were able to recreate this. I have this saved in our list as well. And we can see that it matches our calculations up here. So we can now actually calculate the NPV. And it'll be very similar to what we did before. I'm just going to copy and paste it since we already saw the code before. Same thing, I want the bar to be red if it's negative and blue if, it's, if the cash flow is positive. Let's run this. Great. And again, we have the outflow at the beginning, the initial investment for the project. We have the discounted flat cash flows going out to four years. We sum over this and we have a net present value of $354 million. I hope that this tutorial was useful. Again, I highly recommend checking out this book by this textbook by Professor Aswat Damador in Applied Corporate Finance. A version of it is free online. I hyperlinked it here. I also hyperlinked Professor Damodorn's financial blog. Very, it's really good and it really describes a lot of things that are going on nowadays in the financial markets. Also, if you want to learn more about IRR and different ways to calculate it, we calculate it with a while loop. You can also use the Newton Rapson method. Professor Lee outlines how to do it here in this link. Finally, if you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, and Odyssey. Thanks again, everybody, for watching, and happy coding.